Hi, this is Fee from Diamond in the Rough. And um, I'm working on the boot. And I've just completed um, another upload while I was working on it. Um, just one that had comments on what went down. And um, so that I got I got my say out there instead of just sitting there silent. So what is it? What I'm doing now is brush that all aside, moving on, and I'm going on to doing some drill with me. So hopefully everybody's had a fantastic um, New Year so far, and uh, all your Christmas uh, wishes were went well. I um, hope you spent lots of time with your families. Um, For me, I went, um, my partner and I went to Sydney and did a surprise visit to his family. Um, apparently he hasn't been back home for Christmas for over 10 years. So he let his sister know that he was on his, that we were coming and she was the only one that knew. Um, so yeah, that was quite a, a good thing. We turned up on on um, their do on his mum's door, and she was like, "What are you doing here?" <laughs> so it was a nice Christmas surprise. Um, so yeah, um, I'm going to stop right here for a second, and I'm going to insert a little clip um, where I'm zoomed in significantly on this section because I've struggled with some symbols. And so I'm going to pop it in here as soon as I finish talking briefly. And then just to explain some of the issues that I'm having with this section with some of these symbols and give you a better look at, at the issue there. Um, so yeah, I'll stop here. I'll put in my special bit about what I've been working on there. And then I'll continue on. So this is where I struggle with the symbols. I'm zoomed in significantly here. That. So I'm zoomed right in. Move that out of the way so you can get back into focus. I'm working with the light pad underneath me. Which I will turn off, hang on, bear with me while I turn it off. Okay. Okay, so we can see, even with the light pad off, these here are divide by signs. You can see here, these are the arrows. Okay, but the question is, what is this? So both, I'm guessing it's an arrow because I'm thinking it's got the grey around it. And that's the same as this one here. And if we compare here, grey to the um, divide by sign. If you are trying to do this quickly, yeah, you know, this is what slows me down. And every time, uh, uh, this is this is well, not that it slows me down; it slows people down. Um, I'm working with light board without light board. I'm working with lamp over top. I'm using my phone. I am struggling with some of these colours. So this is this is where I'm. I just need to show you that. This is where the struggle is. So hopefully um, you understand where I'm coming in with the struggle because if you look closely, you've got to look really closely. <laughs> um, sorry, I was I've got Google Assist up and I've got it came up with a really weird thing it seems to think I'm talking to it um, so yeah that's for me I 
if I was not really concentrating hard, I'd be looking at, well, I was, I was, this is where I got stuck. It's like this one, what is this? This one, what is this? Is it an arrow? Is it a percentage? Up here, tell me what that is. Okay. That's one that I think I'm going to have to hunt down. I think it might even be a totally different symbol. Same as there. What's that symbol? Okay. Now, if I go light over top, sorry, it will readjust. Light over top. Which symbol was it I was looking at? Look at that. It's still... You know, it's just frustrating. Absolutely frustrating to do try and do do this um, especially when you're working with colors that are so similar um, if you have let's see if we'll focus in again focus there goes my knuckles I look a pretty flower and come on focus focus well, I'll just adjust my zoom on that Turn the light off. Still got the light pad underneath. Okay. So that's zoomed right in. Yeah. I use a light pad for a reason to see the symbols, but then I've got to turn the light pad off because I can see some of these symbols are actually better without the light pad. I put the lamp on over top, and that, yeah, they are clearer so it's really um, it's a struggle between working with a light pad without a light pad with a light over top without a light over top um, and the combination of and then having to use my phone to actually zoom in and when you look at the two colors so what we've got is the if I get it across zoomed in you see how different those colors are so yeah um so yeah that's um just a little bit of a little bit of a section saying yeah this is the symbols which i'm struggling with okay so continuing on did that take too long or not okay so i'm going to actually pull this camera out because i'm actually working on a bigger section of the boot than just um, that flower. I'm working that whole section. Oops, 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 oops. I'm working the whole section. I was only zoomed in for, for a brief little interlude. And you might see that I'm actually working with the light pad underneath, but I'm also working with a lamp over top just to help me out with some of what I'm looking at because I'm running two colors because I am struggling with these specific symbols so if I run two colors I know um, the symbols that I can clearly identify um, I will, I'll be able to do no issue and then I'll look at it from further and I'm looking at this from different angles and that one there. And I think that's it for those colours. Uh, which I'll put away. Because it's all of it, it's only in those flowers that those colours seem to be at this stage. So yeah, we... Um, we went to Sydney, surprised um, my partner's mum and his family. You know, his brothers have rocked up to um, his mum's place for Christmas. His brother has, and his brother-in-law, and it's they're all like going, "What are you doing here?" So yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, the process of getting there though was a total utter pain. Uh, I s so we flew over on the Christmas Eve. And we came home on Boxing Day. So it was a quick visit. Um, 
my partner wanted to do the red eye the night before Christmas Eve, so we we arrived Christmas Eve morning. Does that make sense? Um, and uh, due to the fact that I was working, I was on my last night shift. We couldn't go until I think the earliest flight we could get was about nine thirty in the morning. So I've just fantastic trip. I've come off night shift at six six o'clock, somewhere around there. I've gotten home and basically I've showered, finished packing the suitcase and had a coffee. Hops I missed one of those. Oh, gosh. Um, had a coffee. Um, and then we were on our way. So we were, I was hoping, <laughs> hoping or believing that I would get some sleep on the flight over and I didn't get a single bit of sleep. So we landed, so we left 9.30 our time, well approximately our flight was delayed. Um, it's nice when the captain actually turns around on the plate, plate, plane saying we, we were delayed because of mechanical issues and this is not the original plane we were going to be departing on. <laughs> uh, we're happier to put you on a safe plane than on one that needs repairs. So fair call. You know, I appreciated that. Don't know how many other people did. Alrighty, so where else have I got these? They're all up here. Um, so yeah, we got there, I think it was about four o'clock Sydney time because Sydney is three hours ahead of Perth. Um, got off the plane and rocked up on his mum's door. So they were very surprised, which was really cool. Really cool. Um, I was very tired but because I'd gone, I'd come off night shift, if I had gone and had a sleep at that stage, I was going to end up not sleeping through the night. So I stayed up. So in, if I look at the fact that from, I got out of bed four o'clock, half past four Christmas, the day before Christmas Eve. So half past four in the afternoon, yeah, about half past four in the afternoon. By the time we got, I got home, got on the plane and got to Sydney, which was, um, you know, about four, five o'clock, somewhere around there, Sydney time, which was one, two o'clock Perth time. Um, you know, I'd gone 20 plus hours without sleep. I think that's what it works out to. Quick average rough guesstimation. And then wouldn't refuse to go to sleep because I knew I'd mess up my complete sleep cycle even further. So we stayed up till, I stayed up till about 9.30 that night, which is 6.30 in Perth. So I'd been awake for more than 24 hours. I was struggling at the end of it, but yeah. So yeah, we had Christmas with um, my partner's family, which was absolutely brilliant um, which meant that the gifts that I gave in Perth I actually weren't there to see people's reactions and how they felt about it so the custom wedding picture went to my friends um, for Christmas and I said to them because we gave it before we gave it to them before we went and they weren't to open at Christmas Day and I said to them I wanted um, I wanted somebody to film to film the um, un, un, unwrapping I was nearly going to say unboxing but the unwrapping of it so um, they did they filmed it and it was priceless um, and both both of them were really happy with it going by the, the reaction so my I had concerns when doing doing the diamond painting that maybe it was too big or too much or 
you know, you just get there, you're not quite sure whether, how the people take something so, being done so huge, okay. Um, so yeah, they, they, they loved it. Um, I still haven't been around to see them yet because I've been on shift and then my partner's been at work. So just, you know, everybody's catching up with everything after Christmas. Um, so we will go around there. I'm just trying to look at the next slide of symbols. There we go. Um, so we'll go around there. I can turn this off now, I think. Yep. So we're going to go around there this weekend um, and I'll see it. Um, hung up because apparently they were very quick to take another picture down to hang this. Okay. Got a jewel there. No, that belongs there. Just Sorry, just bear with me while I'm trying to make sure that these are all the same symbol. Nope, dry is finished. Um, so yeah, they were, they very quickly apparently took a picture down and put this one up. Um, one of the beads has fallen out. Um, so I'll go around there with, um, diamond pen you know and they'll open it up and I'll, I'll rectify the issue um, they do believe that there is one tiny drill at the bottom of the of the frame and they believe it's that one um, my partner's already been around there and I told him when you go there take a photo of the hole I want a picture of the symbol so that then I can make sure I've got the right color to go in there because yeah you know, I don't want to um, assume that that one that's come off is that one you know I want to make sure it's it's right um so yeah so that was that that was the custom wedding picture now the other one was the soulmates so i haven't posted the review on that uh it's not framed it's this is the five panel that is Two of them is 30 by 50, two are 30 by 80, and one is a 30 by 100. So that's not framed. And I won't be framing that. That will be going to professional framers to be done because that one needs to be... Uh, to, to make it look the best it can be, I believe it needs to go under um, straight-out glass framing um, or perspex, but no... Um, what surround no a frameless needs to be frameless in my opinion to get the best effect um, but my son was coming around and feeding the animals while we were away and coming in and checking on them and all of that and um, had the cards there on the bench uh, and turned around and said to him you need to open that Christmas card now because that tells you about your Christmas present um, the, his, the soulmates is actually lying on a queen size bed so it takes up the full queen size bed which is how big it is and he he's rung me up and I can hear the emotion in his voice of how how much he um, you could hear the emotion in his voice how, how much he 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 liked it um, and he said that has got to have taken you so long and I turned around and said it took me a long time and it was a hard one to do um, being hard one to do was because of um, It was when you see the soulmates one with the star night sky and the stars this this is so much confetti in it that it was just really hard to do um, so yeah that one took me quite a few months to do and i was needing to take a break from it to do other diamond paintings just to keep going at it getting it done so yeah um that was so those two diamond paintings that i Sent, had for Christmas presents for people um, were well received 
um, the Christmas cards. Now the Christmas cards that we've we've got, where we you know everyone's seen with the diamond paintings on them. You put your drills on it. Um, I actually had them. I bought them so that I can give them to our neighbours. Um, but then when I found out we were going to Sydney, um, it was like, oh well, I'll use those for my partner's family. So yeah, they um, all got them and his mum said oh where did you get these from and I told her that I made them and so yeah there's a big long-winded conversation about that and I've shown in my YouTube clip and um, so yeah that there was a little bit of a extra sharing there of the diamond painting so the, you know it, the gift this is a gift that keeps on giving you know, you, you enjoy doing it so you, you know this is something I enjoy doing so I'll give I try and give most of the stuff away that I do um, but I also am mindful of not overdoing it. <laughs> um, but yeah. So yeah. So that was my Christmas. Um, Sydney and back the next. Well, we we flew home the next day, so it was good, good, good catch up with his family. Um, and then we got back from Sydney. And I only had the four days off. So I had 24th, 25th, 26th and the 27th off. So I had the 24th was a flying day and recovery from night shift. 25th was Christmas. 26th was flying home. So the 27th was um, basically cleaning the house and, and doing all the washing and that before I went back on the shift. And then I went on to the shift and I was on night shift for New Year's Eve. So I saw the New Year's in at work. Um, so I'm in the middle of the city where I work and there was fireworks. But most of the time in, in Perth, the fireworks were generally over the river. So it was like, well, I'm on the other side of the building so I wouldn't see it. Surprise, surprise, the fireworks were on my side of the building, which was pretty cool. I had them right close. Um, so yeah that was uh, you know I got to see fireworks and I'm on the 23rd floor so it's a pretty interesting pretty good view um, of the fireworks um, and I actually haven't looked at the footage I did do a quick video footage um, as I say where I work I'm not supposed to have my phone out um, so I pulled it out for a quick little bit of footage of um, the fireworks and if it's any good I will insert it somewhere around here for you to have a look so hopefully I was able to insert it still learning how to do that stuff okay so yeah so that was New Year's um, and I've got no idea what today is today is a Friday the 4th of January so if I, sorry, I keep track of my shifts on this. So I've had um, two days off. I'm on my third day off and I'm not due back until Monday the 7th. So um, I've got two more days today and two more days before I go back to work. Um, I have recommenced working on my big Durban custom. Um, but I'm also working on this one because this one's a round and rounds are generally quicker. So my Durban Customs I am three quarters of the way through. And yeah, I am want to get it done. But I suppose one thing with prolonging that one is once I've done that big one, I most of mine are smaller ones. Um, well, I won't say smaller. They're not the 30 by 40s. They're, they're fair size ones. Um, so I suppose I'm trying to slow it down um, to really enjoy going back to doing the diamond painting because last few days before Christmas, although I was on shift, I was rushing to get these diamond paintings completed for Christmas presents, um, especially my son's. Um, yeah. So that was um, 
an absolute rush to get done. Uh, so yeah, I kind of got to the point where I don't want to do any more uh, for a little while. Um, shit went down and I didn't want to do any YouTube, YouTube, excuse the language there. I didn't want to do any more YouTube recording for a little while. Um, but I got the fairy garden, fairy, guardian fairy and, is it fairy? Northern dragon prince, no. Yeah, it is. The northern dragon princess was the one I got completed. Um, which I've recorded the view, but I don't think I've posted it. Keep an eye out for that one. Okay, whoops. Radio. Radio. Next color. Now, what I'm doing because because these colors got them, they're not in DMC number order, or they're only in order of most to least. I suppose quantity. Um, I've just been working my way through, working my way down each one. Um, so I'm doing, a, I'm actually working on this big massive section. So you can see the pieces that I'm still working on. Still got some bits to go, quite a fair bit to go. Um, so yeah, I, <laughs> can you see that? No, you can't see that. I've got the, all the drills are lined up on the side because of the static, <laughs> which I'm still chuckling over. Okay, if you don't laugh, you go crazy. Hang on. Most crazy people laugh anyway. Yeah, that's me. Okay, so, so yeah, I've been working on this by section and just working my way down the list of um, the order of the drills of the size, the quantity. Yeah, because that's the only way I can get my head around doing that. Um, so yeah, so that's Sydney, New Year's, and we're all back to normal. So hopefully there'll be some more, a few more YouTube clips. I've got Northern Dragon Princess review to um, finalise, I suppose. I haven't framed it. I've got to find a frame for it. Um, but she's sealed. Um, I have got, what else have I got? I've got to do the, post the review on the Soulmates. Um, what am I working on at the moment? So this one, I'm working on the Durban Custom. I am working on, for really quick bit, little, quick little half hour stints on, is the lion with the rhinestones, which is pretty cool. Um, I've still got my blue eyed tiger from Ever Moment that I'm working on. Um, now that one, um, I've been taking to work to do when it's really quiet. Um, I'm actually going to have to start working on that at home and finish it off at home because I'm actually getting trained to do another section of where I work and when in training you can't do anything but concentrate and learn whoops where did that go there it is. so yeah you just while you're learning you should you, yeah, you don't get distracted by anything else so I'll be doing that tiger at home and getting it done um, what else have I got that's it that I'm really work oh no I've got the big peacock um, I think it's a 45 by 75 one of the f earlier ones that I unboxed that I've done a small section too so that's around um, so I've got that to that I'm working on that I've got to get completed and then I'm down to, I think after that, I've got about five diamond paintings that I haven't done, haven't touched. Um, 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 I've done a setup for the Forest Fairy and the Guardian Tiger. I've done the setup and for that one, 
and I've posted that one and that's using the new um, that those storage containers where they with the 60 bottles which is I'm really impressed with that really do like it um, which is on, on that Guardian Tiger posting but yeah I'm down to probably only having about five or six diamond paintings left in my stash to do so um, yeah, once I get the big ones done, I'm going to be plowing through the little ones. So I'm going to have to start ordering some more. So there'll be some more unboxings coming up. Um, so yeah, so that's where we're at now. Now, one of the things that I've been watching people do on YouTube is live drill with me's. And I'm tossing up whether to do it or not. I'm not sure. Um... I'm in a totally different time zone to most of you guys in the US that most of my subscribers but um, I'm contemplating doing it and if if it's something that you'd like me to do please put a comment below um, and let me know um, yeah it's I don't know whether I should do it or not uh, yep, let me put those away. Yeah, there's still a fair amount of static in that. Okay, no, that's one of the reasons why I've got static in it. Static in it. Um, my dryer sheets, which I have, that should sort that out. Okay, um. I am going to quickly go on to the AB drills. So this has got AB drills in it. And I'm going to, because what I've got next is up here, which I work on. But the AB drills, which is the Aurora Borealis. I'm just taking it out. One of the things about these is the sparkle. Okay, okay. If I use up the whole screen, yeah, we'll go be able to zoom in. So there's a sparkle on that. There's a coating on those. I get so frustrated using these. These are stunning, absolutely beautiful. But I get, you find that because of this coating on the top of them, your drill pens don't work properly or that you need to constantly top them up. So I actually do the Aurora Borealis drills with um tweezers so i don't know whether anybody else has noticed it or whether it's just me but you can probably pick up about five or six of these with a drill pen and then you've got to get more wax so tweezers uh, for aurora borealis is really good to do um So yeah, oops, I've just spotted one. Spotted a symbol that I've missed. Hang on. Hopefully it's that. Okay, okay, yeah, it's that. Uh, bear with me. Let's just pop that in there. Okay, okay. So yeah, I use the tweezers for the Aurora Borealis drills just um, yeah that coating seems to affect the wax um, my very first two diamond paintings that I did were diamond dots which had the Aurora Borealis drills in it um, which when I ordered um, some diamond paintings online and there wasn't any in there I was surprised because I was already used to having them in the kits <laughs> so um, when I get a diamond painting and there isn't any of the Aurora Borealis in it I was a little bit disappointed but I have since discovered that not diamond painting does not always have these special drills um, I am one thing I am contemplating for my drills in the next next slot of diamond paintings that I do I'm looking at some of those that are full rhinestones 
to give them a go. Um, seeing mixed reviews online about them. Um, I know for me it has to be, well, for, <laughs> shouldn't say has to be. For me, I like the big ones, so it will be one of the big ones. There we go, I've just missed another, another one of these symbols. Bear with me while I get it round. There we go, got it the right way. Where did that go? Here it is. Okay, so yeah, I'm looking at that as well, doing the rhinestone, a full rhinestone. Um, so if anybody that's uh, watching and subscribing to what I do, please put a comment on which ones you found that are, are worth doing, if you're doing one at all. Um, so yeah, they're something that I want to do next. Or order next um, because I'm doing the the lion with the rhinestones which is a partial I actually feel quite liking the rhinestones um, but yeah so you know I want to find one that's not because they are a, a, you know you notice they're pricier than the normal diamond paintings which is understandable um, I don't want to waste my money on one that's not going to look right and if you've had a bad experience with one you know, I'd like to not necessarily have you point out to say it's a bad experience just turn around and say this one didn't was too pixelated and that's all all we need or if you say I've done one or I'm in the process of one and if you're a YouTuber and you're in the process of one just uh, let me know that you've got one on your channel and I'll go looking at it directly Okay, so that's Aurora Borealis, um, which from there you can't really see. Oh, gosh, hang on. <laughs> Just one won't get out. If I put the light on it. enough sparkle that you don't really see it anyway so yeah there there's some there here it's not a lot there oh so the question is what do I discuss next well one of the things I have previously talked about was um, my trip to Egypt So what I thought I'd do, I know, I think my trip to Egypt was day five, which was, where was I? Aswan and Kamamu. Yeah, I just saw something that's not right. There we go, there it is. Where is that? There we go. I saw drills that weren't sitting nicely. Where did I see them? So, yeah. Um, Komobu, S1 Komobu, and there it is. <laughs> Day six of my Egypt trip. So, here we go. I'm going to go into that story of back to that. Um, Day six. Well, can't recall if I said anything on the others of when I got to the Nile um, and I copped gastro. So I was still suffering with gastro. Not as bad. My stomach had settled. Um, I had been given some strong antibiotics from the travel doctor. So, um, yeah, it was pretty cool that, that those tablets did work pretty quickly. But on this day we went to, day six we went to Abydos, um, the Temple of Abydos, and then we went to um, Dandara Temple, um, and which is pretty, they're pretty cool. Yeah, the, everything you see over there is pretty cool when you look at how old things are. 
Um, but um, Abydos was an experience in itself. So in Egypt, you, know, you have your security concerns in Egypt. Abydos, when you go to Abydos, you have to go in with a an escort. So you've got um, a vehicle in front of you with guys sitting in the back of the utes with their guns. So you've got an escort going in. And you get there thinking, holy cow, you know, what am I What am I doing? What What's the issue, you know? Um, and then as you're driving along, these guards on in their vehicles are actually getting further and further away from you and you're thinking well if something happens to us all the way back here it's going to take them a while to get back to us they're not really doing that much in the way of protection so i do believe that abydos was just the, the security requirement there was more for show um, it was also meant that people knew that it was a tourist coming through um, which the traffic was pretty smooth flowing for us going in. Um, in the temple of Abydos, there's um, how, how do I, there, there, there is some interesting works in the temple where some people believe that there's some carvings marked out or whatever you call them marked out which showed the showed a submarine and a helicopter uh, and I will say yes that's what it looked like when I saw them they did look like helicopters and one of a helicopter and one of a submarine that submarine could have also been a spaceship you know just the way it was uh, so yeah that was uh, an interesting visit I did take photos of it but my photos didn't come out very well um, yeah, which I was disappointed in, but there's some pictures on the web on my web page. Um, which show a lot of the the reliefs that are on there. Um, so from Abydos we went to Dendara, um, which has just trying to yep yeah, I just wanted to have a quick look at the website which has the has the the, the first the, the pictures of the zodiac are actually all on the roof in that temple um, which is pretty cool to see that this is these these symbols for you know Aries, Sagittarius, Scorpio, the whole zodiac was up there. Um, makes you think about where it came from. Because astronomy and astrology, so it's more astro astro it's more astrology, has been out there for so long. Um, I used to be a big one believing in your star sign. Um, I still fairly believe in it, not to the degree I used to. But to see it back in works, you know, thousands of years ago makes you do a second thought of, well, maybe there is something actually in it. You know, for to be to be recognised that far long ago or looked at that long ago, it's gotta mean something. So yeah, that was cool. There was also on one of the walls was uh, a a woman uh, with a young child, and I won't I mean child. It just looks like an adult, just painted in and as a smaller size, and that is actually an image of is meant to be the image of. Cleopatra and her son Caesar so there's you know that was pretty cool to see as well um, what else did we see <laughs> okay now I think previously I've mentioned how I struggled with the food in Egypt I was taken to a place called I think it was snack time 
um, was it there? No, it was. No, it wasn't there. So yeah, we've turned around and gone, done all these visits, and then gone back to the ship. And I, I've endured another one of their dinners, which yeah, yeah, back to the salads, which probably what caused my issue of gastro when I was away. Um, yeah, so that was the back to the ship. So that was day six. There's some pretty cool things to see in Dendara and in Abydos. Day seven. So day seven, um, you wake up in the morning and you're actually, you haven't traveled. You're still, still you're, at, you're actually at Luxor. Um, so day seven, you get up in the morning and you see all these hot air balloons up in the air. I, as part of my tour, I was given the option to do hot air ballooning. However, as part of my research before I went away, which is because because I travel solo, I've got to look at all sorts of stuff. Um, one is my safety. The biggest one is my safety and my security. Um, but so I was offered to, if I wanted to go hot air ballooning, which I turned around and went, nope, not doing it. Not at all. Two reasons. One, I'm scared of heights. Two, they, there's been a significant amount of hot air ballooning accidents. So it just, I'm going to turn this overhead lamp off I don't need that now um, so yeah there'd been a lot of incidents with hot air balloons in up in um, Luxor so I was uh, not keen to go do it plus being scared of heights the only way I would do a hot air balloon was if I had someone that I trusted explicitly to be by my side uh, I'm like that with anything with heights. If I've got someone beside me that I trust, I'm fine. But if I don't have someone beside me that I don't trust, I'm not good with heights. I'm a short person. So, yeah, I had the option to do the hot air ballooning, but went, no, not doing it. Not a good thing for me to do. Oh, I might do it one day with Nathan, but not, not yet. Okay, so yeah, we had um, packed lunch done for us and packed up my bags and so I had to pack my bags because we were off the, off the cruise at that on that day, um, which I will say I was glad to be off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was not, I, I, yeah, all I can say is that was not five star deluxe that I went to, <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, did, we went to um, Valley of the Kings, which was amazing, absolutely amazing, my guide turned around and he said to me these are this is what you'll see so at the beginning this is what you'll see this is what is included in what you your your tour this is what you will get to see and then he turned around and he said what I do recommend and you know you think when someone a guide's turning around saying what do you you know they recommend you doing stuff um you think oh you're just you know piling out more money these guides um, Mr. Rad Radwan was just, um, I think he was more straight up with me, which I really appreciated. But he turned around and said, there was one of the ones to go into that you paid extra for was Tutankhamun's um, tomb. Uh, there was also a couple others that you could pay to go into. And he said to me, 
Tutankhamun's tomb, he said it's not worth the money. Um, but he did say, uh, which one? The Seti the first tomb was was worth paying for. Um, so yeah, I paid extra for that. And yeah, it, yeah, it was a significant amount of funds to pay for that. Um, but he also turned around and said, in the tombs, unless you have a ticket, a camera ticket, you cannot take photos inside. He said, some places you're able to um, pay money to the people that are walking around as a as a extra fee, um, and they won't say anything. He said, but here is different. They will pick your camera out of your hands and they will find the delete button and they will remove your any photos taken in that tomb. So he said, what you'll need to do, the best thing you can do is get a ticket so that, that allows you to do photography inside the tombs. He said, there's been quite a few times where he has recommended it to other tour groups that he's taken and they've turned around and gone, no, we won't do it. And then what they've turned around and done had to go. Once you get up to the tombs, you then have to come back to buy a camera ticket because you cannot buy those tickets up at the tombs themselves. So, so yeah, I brought a camera ticket. So, you know, I had that in my hand at all times. And the guides there were checking to make sure that you actually had the ticket. And I was plodding along taking all these photos and one couple turned around and they said we wish we'd bought the ticket so yeah if you ever have the opportunity to go to the valley of the kings buy a camera ticket that it's stunning the, the, the photos you take are amazing what you see is amazing in there um so like most of the other places around egypt when you get taken around with guides the guides are allowed up to a certain point and then you are left alone. So that drops the noise level inside places. And it gives you really the opportunity to absorb what you're seeing. Um, and, oh wow, yeah. the When you have the tombs of the pharaohs that lived for long times, the more intricate the work was because the workers were able to work on them for a lot longer. So if you were a young ruler when you died, you only had a certain amount of years of the work, whereas some of the pharaohs that lived decades, they had decades of work. So, yeah, their tombs were really impressive. Um, one tomb that I went into, which is Seti the first tomb, which um, hadn't been open for long, um, no photographs allowed. You weren't allowed to take pictures in there at all. I had to leave everything with my guide, phone, bag, everything. I think the only thing that I got away with carrying was my, um, pack, pa basically my pa purse, pa pa passport bag that I just kept on me. I refused to give that up, which, you know, fair call. <laughs> you don't give your passport up at any, for anyone. Um, so, yeah went into Seti the first and that was stunning absolutely stunning um, okay so we've done all of that um, one of the ways to get to the Valley of the Kings from the entrance to um, where the tombs are is actually by a, a, like a little train on on wheels and not on not on metal wheels but on tyres, rubber tyres. Um, so we, once I'd seen everything um, that I wanted to see, I got a photo from outside Tutankhamun's tomb. Uh, with Even though I didn't go in, I was able to get a photo on the outside of me standing outside of it. Um, so yeah, we did that and hopped on the little transport back to the gates and, and off we went. 
from there we went to excuse that okay don't you hate it when that happens there it's an immediate look for where they've gone isn't it uh, no that one's in the right spot hang on yep they've got them um, so yeah from there we went to the Valley of the Queens which um, sad to say it was pointless going to other than to say you'd been there there wasn't really much to see um, you could only go into a couple of the tombs and they were only small uh, so yes and then finished up at the Valley of the Queens and went what's it called I'm trying to remember the name of it Temple of Queen Hatchaput Hatch something like that Hatchaput or something like that and um, yeah that was huge that was huge um, it was a very long walk there was no motor transport from the gates up to the temple because it was yeah it was just this huge long walk um, and lots of stairs but yeah it was really cool really good to see um, and got a bit of time walking around there left there and was taken to a place where they make uh, alabaster statues and what can i say about that yeah okay the process is a very long process and i appreciate that um, there's a lot of work that goes into it i didn't have much of an interest because I felt and this is only the way I felt I felt like I was pressured to buy something and not by my guide it was more by that the people there they were it, that's the way it felt to me in in my country that's the way it felt whereas it might be just the way that they are so yeah but I felt like you know they were giving me a demonstration so therefore I had to buy something where I went into the store with the aim to buy something and I couldn't find anything I liked. It wasn't my taste. Um, a lot of stuff in Egypt is just not my taste. The, the Egyptian floor rugs, yes, they were definitely my taste. But then that taste was very expensive taste, the silk rugs. Um, but yeah, that was uh, more uh, the alabaster stuff yeah I just didn't it wasn't yeah I didn't find anything that I liked I did want to buy my one of my boys a chess set made out of alabaster but um, let's just say it was a bit too much I couldn't afford it I couldn't afford to buy it so yeah I was disappointed that I couldn't but that's the way it goes so we did that went to the alabaster and then it was uh, I was taken to get a meal so if you actually have and I'll put, we'll put the link in um, I will put the link in to my, my, my website again um, but I was taken to this place for, for, to, for something to eat um, and you get in taken to this yeah it, it, it's it's like a place where you it looks like you buy fried chicken or not to, not buying like kfc but the knock up of the fried chicken a knock up of kfc or, or something this something of the like um you get to you're at the ground floor and you get into a little elevator now that elevator probably only has capacity for three or four people um, yeah 
yeah, only a small capacity for three or four people. And one of those is the lift operator. But you get in this lift, this little glass lift, and it takes you all the way up. So it took me all the way up to the top. And, you know, it's quite, it's all open. And then I've been ushered right to the balcony. So I've got right at the balcony, I'm overlooking um, Luxor. And then I've had this dishes brought to me um, and I was starving. And the first dish was a, a tray of br different breads and different dips. And I really did enjoy it. There was one that I enjoyed more than the others. Um, and that was Baba Ganoush. So I actually asked, I said, you know, what's this? This is really good. And he's gone, oh, Baba Ganoush, you know, he explained it to me. Um, and part of his explanation to me was saying that it was actually eggplant. And I'm like going, you're kidding. Me, I don't like eggplant, but I can tell you one thing, that was really nice. Now the question in, in my mind is though, at that point was, is it really nice because I'm starving because the food on that boat was so horrendous? Or is it that I'm really, really do like it? Um, I tested that theory out later on in the trip. So, but, I fairly hoed into that and I had a really good meal. I can't remember the rest of what I ate, but that Baba Ganoush just stood out to me. But I sat there and I had my soft drink. They only had Pepsi, but what they did do for me is somebody went and got me Coke. So normally if you go to a shop, a restaurant to buy and you say, I would like a Coke, most of the time they, they go, we've only got Pepsi and so you've got to drink Pepsi. Well, these guys actually went and got me Coke. So I was really impressed with that. So I'm sitting there with a full belly because I've eaten what I class as a really nice meal, which was only snack food basically. But it, yeah. Um, and I sat back and I relaxed. It was really good. Um, when I was, while I was sitting there, I had a gentleman come up to me and have a chat with me. You know, I didn't think anything of it. And he was asking me all sorts of questions. You know, how am I enjoying the trip? What's everything been like? rah -de rah So I told him, you know. And then after I turned around and told him about it, where it, the trip so far, he went, that's good to hear. I'm such and such, I'm the boss, it's his it was his company. Um, and because I'm shocking with names, I just can't remember his name. But it was his company. So as a personal touch, when you actually have, he didn't introduce me who he was at first, it was more just like a friendly chat from somebody, someone a local, yeah. Um, I was actually giving, able to tell him about the trip and what I enjoyed and what I didn't enjoy without any conception of the fact that I was talking to his, to the boss. It was all, I'm just talking to somebody off the street about how I was going and how what I was enjoying of the trip and what I hadn't enjoyed of the trip. But yeah, after I'd turned around and told him, he then turned around and said, well, I'm really glad you're happy that you're enjoying yourself. Um, you know, I told him you know, some of the stuff about the upset stomach and all that. Um, you know, he was sad about that. And he, then he turned around and said, you're really happy about what you do like because um, I'm actually the boss. That This is my company. So it was his tour company. And um, he turned around and said to me, if you have any problems to contact him. So he gave me his details. Um, and he made it really personal like you see some of the big tour companies that um you see yeah you know, and i don't think they'd give that personal touch where he really valued the feedback that i gave him so yeah that was pretty cool um 
from there it was end of day and I was taken to where I was staying which um, I was in the Ste Steigenberger Nile Palace which was my room was huge I had a massive bed and oh my goodness after being in a cabin with on a single bed it was really 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 good really good um, I sat back for a little while I had a bath I soaked because like it was pretty pretty dusty where we'd been so I had a good soak and then I wandered around the hotel so the hotel was pretty big because one of the things that um, Rad one had said is if I want to leave I need to if I want to leave the hotel I was to contact him um, so that he would escort me you know around because it wasn't as a woman walking around Luxor is probably not the safest thing to do and I'm not I'm not a naive tourist I was like no nah, I'm just staying here there was restaurants there was gift stores it was really good really good place to be um, because I'd had that feed I at the snack time or happy time or whatever it was called um, because I'd had a feed there I um, how do I put it I wasn't really hungry so I wandered around looking at the restaurants in the complex and nothing really stood out to me so I've just gone back to my room and updated everything and then I come out again going well I want something to eat and in the main courtyard was a ice creamery so I just sat back and had an ice cream and just chilled in this lovely little area so yeah um, so yeah that was that was those days then what I did do the next day after that we went and visited Luxor itself so we went to the Karnak temple we went to Luxor now one of the things about Egypt is the amount of security around where they you know they're looking for bombs and all of that stuff while we were at was it Kar a Karnak temple um, so we've gone around and seen Karnak temple been wandering and all of that and then we get to the area to leave so the section where you exit the temple or exit the building that you go into to get in um, and the difference in the atmosphere you, there was something different and oops that's what happens my phone just rang okay sorry about that I'm back and I've actually completed another couple of colours before because I was on speakerphone to my my youngest. I've only got a couple of colours left to go. I've just picked up that I've missed a couple of colours, a couple of pills. So yeah, um, can't even quite remember where I was except for, the, for my chat, except that. Uh, I suppose the Stoneburger Hotel of where I was staying. No, then I was talking about actual Luxor. Oh, trying to get just one. There we go. Um, the There was just a sudden change in the air about stuff. And that sudden change was um, you just suddenly were able to see security everywhere. So... Um, and what I mean by security I mean you could see guys walking around with 
machine guns. You could, the, the security was so much more visible. And there was more of them, more of the security guys around, or guards, or military, or whatever. And Radwan had actually turned around and said to me, there's been a bombing at a mosque. So, you know, that was horrible. But as soon as that happened, you know, you could see the added security. They were very, security in the air was so much tighter. Um, so, yeah, that was pretty, uh, I suppose it's not hard to see, but when you live in a, a place like we live, an area that we live in, um, where we don't worry, we don't have those those threats. Um, you actually see how it affects everybody around. Um, you know, the bombing of the mosque was in a section of the country that I was not going to go to at all because it's actually classed as um, un absolutely unsafe. Oops, I think I've missed an AB drill. Um, where it was, do not travel. Like Egypt, say, reconsider your need to travel. Where this bombing was, this section where this bombing was, it was, um, do not travel. Our Australian travel warnings were saying, do not travel there. Um, so yet again, in my research, it was one of the places that I was not going anywhere near. Um, so yeah, but you, you you actually see how it affects how it really affects them. Um, yeah, you could see the looks on people's faces where they were horrified that it happened, but it was just business as usual. Um, you know, this day still goes on, which <laughs> when you get something like that happens in Australia, where just about everybody is in an uproar. Um, and it's to really know about it but yeah uh, so yeah um, from there we went to the Luxor temple um, and saw some yeah just small stuff more more um, carvings more statues um, it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. So the statue, a statue of Tutankhamun there. Um, oops, another AB missed. Whoops, that one there, that one there. Um, so yeah, now from there was, because that was a pretty easy day. We didn't go out till one in the afternoon because we didn't have to travel far. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we turned around and um, back to the hotel. Radwan had sorted out going, okay, your alarm, will, you, you'll get a wake up call at this time, you'll get a packed lunch. And he organized everything and told me what I needed to do with checkout. So really well looked out, looked after yet again you know with red wine it was like well this is the last time you'll see me so you know I, I gave him a reasonable tip or what I believe was a reasonable tip he seemed to be happy with it anyway um, and yeah so that was the last I saw of red wine um, and I was to be picked up in the morning and taken to Hogada um, yet again I had the hotel motel to go wander around and find something to eat and I found this restaurant I don't know what basis it was um, uh, let's see if I can remember yeah it was a Lebanese Lebanese restaurant um, and I've looked at the menu and I'm, I love my prawns or shrimps you yeah, know we call them prawns here um, so I had the grilled prawn um, they grilled the prawn with the shell on sorry <laughs> I was horrified when I looked at it but I was starving so I've actually hoed into it now if I'd actually known that the prawn or the shrimp sorry came out when it came out was going to still have its shell on 
I um, probably wouldn't have ordered it. But I really enjoyed it. It was really good. Um, yeah, it would. I, I, I suppose I get a pre preconceived conception of this is what I want to eat. And I get nose out of joint because there's stuff that I just can't eat, which is really painful in ways. Or I refuse to eat all. Basically, my stomach won't, my throat won't swallow it. It's, just, it's really strange. Um, but yeah, that was that was the way we went with that, and I, I did like that. It, it was really good. And then disappeared to my room. Uh, updated my website. Um, so yeah, there wasn't much more to do there. Just chill, chillax, um, and pack my bags. So the alarm goes off in the next morning. My bags, I've packed my bags. I've had my shower, I've packed my bags, all good to go. Uh, and got picked up by the same driver I'd had when I was taken all over Luxor. So it was good. I knew knew my driver. It's not the driver that I had while in Cairo, but I knew this driver. I had had him for a couple of days. So um, it wasn't like I was handballed to somebody completely different. Yes, I had a different guide um, who wasn't really a guide. It was just more someone so that you're not travelling solo, I suppose. He sat in the front seat, but you're not, it's not like you're just being left with one person. Um, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, got in the bus and driving through what you really do call desert. It was definite desert that we drove through. Um, long trip, boring trip. Um, got about half an hour out of Hagada and I've gone to play with my necklace, which is something I do when I start thinking about something too much and as soon as I start planning I start playing with my necklace and only to discover that I wasn't wearing it and I've just turned around and gone my necklace I'm missing my necklace and the guides actually turned around and he went okay where, where was the last time you had it and I can actually remember I thought about it for a bit and I can remember I sorry I got a drill in the wrong spot I um, that's a bit strange I had actually I could remember taking it off before I went in the shower in the morning and I had left it on the book on the a book on the table um, right next to everything else and I'd put it there so that I wouldn't forget it Blah, forgot it so yeah did that uh, and you know I turned around and went well this is where I've left it um, and he sa I said he goes oh what room are we in and I went this room and this is where you'll find it this is exactly where you will find it um, so he goes, don't worry, we'll, we'll sort it out. So I left it at that and I thought, I'm never going to see that again. So that was a bit, I was like, oh no, you know, I've lost. There's a necklace that my partner had given me. So I thought, oh shit, I'm never going to see that again. So I was a bit disheartened. Um, but yeah, we got to Hagada, taken in. I got checked in, so the guy had helped me check in. And I was left to my own devices for the rest of the day. And the rest of my devices was actually, I had organised some stuff via, is it your guide? I think it was your guide. Um, and one of the trips I'd organised via them was to do a quad bike ride and camel ride in the desert with a meal and some stargazing and 
Yeah, so picked up, a little bit of a delay in being picked up, but we're picked up and taken out and out on quad bikes for this trip. And, oh, my gosh, it was so much fun, so much fun. The best part about my whole trip to Egypt was those quad bikes. <laughs> um, but I thought, oh, yeah, we'll be on the quad bikes for half an hour, if that. Um, but we were actually on the quad bikes for a good couple of hours as we rode into the desert. We went into a Bedouin village, um, shown how they make their bread. Um, taken on a camel ride and then we were fed dinner um, and a guy with a laser pointer was just pointing out all the stars um, which some of the people that were, were in this group with me um, were like really amazed at the stars and I'm kind of looking at them going, okay, yep, I recognise that one, I recognise that, you know, slightly different, slightly different from the southern hemisphere, but I was recognising what he was pointing at, and people were like ooing and ahhing about all these stars, and what I fail to remember is the fact that some places in the world you have too much light where you don't see that much in the way of stars, um, whereas I, you know, where I am we have that luxury we don't have that much way in lights that block out the stars but yeah and then after that bit of stargazing we got back on the quad bikes and rode all the way back and that was another couple of hours so it was it's really cool really good ride um, if you ever get the opportunity to go quad bike riding in the desert these guys were good. These guys were good. Um, I think a, a link to their site, their, their tour, was actually on my website. Get off! Static! Let's put another one of those dry sheets in that one. Um, so, yeah. I did that, and then Hagada was a couple of days of my own time to do whatever I wanted. Oh, I've got one more left. Hang on. I've got one little tiny one here to do. <sighs> Which 1032, where is that? Not in numerical order. Hang on. Let's work my way through. Four, five. Where are you? I have that, 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 question mark, ah, there it is, okay, so yeah, um, that looks really strange there, but that was the right symbol, right, right. just gonna bear with me, and the crinkling of plastic, where is it? I'm just going to get that out. Just putting the plastic back on top. You might see that I've actually put a sticky note, a sticky bit of sticky on top. So I can always tell which one is the top section. Doesn't make much of a difference now at this part. But just giving this a roll. Okay, okay. So I'll just get my stuff out of the way, move it all to the side, and I'm gonna turn the light out and then zoom out, or well, not necessarily zoom out. I'll turn the camera, take the camera out so you can see see this. Oops. Okay, so I'm just going to take this out 
a bit. So there it is so far. I've got, where's my tape measure? What have I got left to go? I've got 50 centimetres to go, which is approximately 20, 20 inches to go lengthwise. Um, the Aurora Borealis drills are here. Uh, if I put this light on, how much better is it? So that spark is really pretty. Um, like we like the Aurora Bar Borealis because of the extra sparkle, which I don't know if you can really see it, because the amount of sparkle that is on this on these drills anyway. Um, I don't think it really needed the Aurora Borealis in it, but it just gives that little bit of extra character. But I am, I will say, I'm I am liking this. It is quite nice to be working on. It's pretty. Not my style. It's pretty. <laughs> Maybe, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's one section done. I'll work along. What I will do, um, what I am going to do is I'm going to actually prep this for my next round. Because it's the clear canvas, clear plastic cover, I'm actually going to, you have, because it's clear, it's pretty hard to see where these edges are, okay? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to remove this, oh, hang on, I'm going to remove this plastic and I'm going to put this top sheet on it upside down to there and then move the, this plastic down further so if that will do I'm just going to alter that light yeah, that light, and stand up so this is the initial sheet that I cut off off the top I'll just move that out the way make sure I keep it up the right way and I'm going to remove this full. Oh, God. This is why I don't like the plastic because that just ripped on me. Okay. So, what I'm doing is removing the full plastic off. And remember, what I did do is I did put sticky labels so I knew which way is the top and which is the bottom just going to move that down there now this top section let's try and keep it straight let's get this straight basically straight okay okay so that's basically straight okay I'm gonna now roll this on nice and smoothly whoops that label just makes it a little bit harder and I'm rolling it on okay so that's now rolled on nice and easily just now I need to believe it or not pick that up there we go and lift this one off so that I can roll it where so you can see that there I've still got a little bit of a fold here But yeah, that doesn't matter. Pull this back further. 
pack further and just lift that if it's had. Where's my bead sticky mat? There we go. Just hold that back. Now I'm just going to lift this up a little bit higher than I had it. Just move it down there and roll it. And I didn't roll it straight. <laughs> Can any of us ever roll these things back on straight? Once you get the first bit of it, it's pretty simple to do, but it's just the first bit. Okay, no, that's not straight. There we go, that looks straight. I just need to get that first bit started neatly. And let's push it back down. Roll it on. Should not put my hand underneath that. on nicely. Fold that back over. So that gives me a straight line with the one underneath and the piece that I will tear off. Okay, so if we go here, so what we've got now is when I go back to working on this section, I've got a nice straight line with the bottom section instead of the crooked line which then means that when I if I have to lift this up less likely to tear um, what that does mean though is at the end I've got this plastic here which I will actually cut off because I won't need it again now so yeah um, Thank you for joining with in with me on this drill with me. Um, as I said previously or earlier in this, please, if you want to do, uh, if, if if you're interested in a live drill with me, let me know. Um, you know, I want to do one, but I'm not sure. You know, just you know, I suppose the first time you do something, you're never sure whether you want to do it or not. Um, but I've seen other drill with me's where people were able to. The interaction is so much better. So yeah. So thank you for drilling with me. And um, if you like, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like, give it a thumbs. Should go thumbs down. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down. Take your choice. Um, subscribe. Hit the bell. You'll get to know when I'm doing something. When I've uploaded something. And if I do go live, then you'll know that I'm going to go live. That's if I do go live. Um, so yeah. Thanks for watching, and I'll. Talk to you later. Bye.